If you have a question, just raise your hand, and uh, I think probably right here uh, near the front. Yes, I hear that. Right about that. You came prepared too. I think the administration is trying to cut our fee here. The tough part is, until the legislation passes on health care, you can't start a court case on it, and it will take I, I, hold on, it'll take years to litigate. And so, I know that Americans for Prosperity as a grassroots group, not really a, a legal advocacy group. We're focused just like a laser beam on what we're doing here today: spreading the message, telling folks what's going on, urging folks like you to get involved, uh, because in this case, we want to stop it before it happens. I think they tried and they often lost. The general welfare clause has been cited as giving the government a right to do just about anything. I mean, I happen to have the Constitution here. Look how thin it is. This is the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence together. This is what built America. Um, I would like to go back to this as the rules for America. <laughs> show exactly what the increases have been, what the root causes are, why they were there, why these increases have taken place, 
and what we can do about it. Doesn't that make sense to find that out first before we start passing legislation? You bet. Yeah. You know, what, what you just said is a great point. Uh, the Congressional Budget Office in Washington is the, I guess, they're the nonpartisan agency that scores what they think the cost will be in the first decade of major pieces of legislation. And most of the time, they're way, way low. I know you're shocked to hear that a Washington, D.C. group actually, a government agency, missing the cost front. But you mentioned Medicare, and you're exactly right. They have missed, when they have done studies about every decade, estimating for the next decade the percentage increase in Medicare cost. And the last study they did for a decade long period, do you know how much they missed the cost by? Over 200%, they missed it. And I know which, you know which way it was, it was through the roof. And it is, and, and there are some good uh, think tanks out there uh, I mentioned the Heritage Foundation a moment ago uh, at heritage.org uh, on the web. They do incredible research that, that goes into what they think the real cost will be in the real world of these government programs. And there's one other group, Cato, uh, the Cato Institute. Uh, you may have heard of Cato, C-A-T-O. Those two organizations, if you go to their websites, they, they do a superb job of exposing the true cost of the current health bill, but also across the board on, on, on uh, spending. Um, I have lots of patients ask me what I think about what's going on. And my general answer is that I would like to see our government perform evidence-based reform. Because physicians are required to practice evidence-based medicine. Every time I write a prescription for a patient, it should either be FDA approved for what I'm treating them for, or if it's not FDA approved for that, I should have a scientific study to back me up from our reasoning for treating this patient with this particular medication. And it's called, called evidence-based medicine. And that's what we are graded on at, amongst our peers and in our literature. I want to see our government perform evidence-based reform. Do some studies. Whitney, what up? You have someone back there? Okay, my question is, if, God forbid, this does pass, and then we vote out these idiots that are up there and get some smart people in office. Is there any way that this can be like retracted or recalled or whatever? In terms of your question being is, is if, uh, if heaven forbid this passes, can we elect a new group of people in the uh, revised John, you want to grab that? Uh, you can always vote these guys out, but it's very, you know, Thomas Jefferson said it's the natural progress of things for government to grow and liberty to yield. You can blame the Democrats, but the Bush Republicans expanded government more than any administration before that. Sometimes I, I think about the enormous economic success Japan and Germany had after World War II, and I think it's because they were bombed to smithereens and they had to start over. It's very hard to get rid of laws and bureaucracies once they begin. And as Tim mentioned, 51 new federal agencies for this health care reform. You know, Ronald Reagan, I think, is the best president of this. Uh, this yeah. he, he once said that the closest thing to immortality here on Earth is a government program. <laughs> it's, it's very, and he actually said that, it's very hard to roll back one of these programs once it's in place. They build a constituency, they, they hire a, a lot of public employees, and the public employee unions uh, are very aggressive in protecting their, their turf. It's, it's really hard. It's doable constitutionally and, and legislatively, but it's, it is very difficult to do.